I'd like to open a public hearing at this time regarding the Weston Hotel Project Increment Financing. And the time is? 9.09. 909. Good morning. Give us your name, please. Good morning. My name is Courtney Baldwin, and I work with Gerson and Associates, and we represent Capital Hotel Associates in their public financing endeavor. Uh, we are requesting that the county participate in tax increment financing for the Weston Hotel project. The amount is not to exceed $1.75 million over a term of 15 years. Okay. Are there any questions from anyone in the audience regarding this uh, tax increment financing? Any questions? Any questions? If there are no questions from anyone or from no one in the audience, then um, if there's questions from board members, then we'll close the public hearing. Okay? I have a question. Okay. Dr. Walker. Mr. President, the question I'm asking is not really connected to tax increment financing per se, but to overall project. Uh, one of the concerns I have, and it's going to influence my vote on tax increment finance, but one of the concerns I have is what kind of protection does Hines County have for the $20 million pass-through bond um, for this project? And, and I, I, I'm concerned that there needs to be adequate protection of county government and the people of Hines County in the event, of course, we hope that it doesn't happen, but should something happen and the project goes belly up, what kind of protection is there? Yes, sir. I'm glad you asked that, Supervisor Walker. Um, the developer is actually prepared to put forth either a personal and or corporate guarantee to back those bonds, and the developer is here today to, uh, to elaborate on that if you would like or if that response is sufficient, but there will be a guarantee. Uh, Mr. President, it is, it's under order. I would hope that the developer can elaborate on that question. But it's a big question facing not just this board, but the people of Hines County as well. Okay. Um, if you'd have to come uh, forward and uh, Supervisor Hunter, you have a question or a comment? I'm on my way to the developer his uh, presentation. Ferguson. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Yes, sir. Uh, State your name. Joseph Simpson, I'm one of the developers, Capital Hotel Associates, and our investment group is personally guaranteeing joint severally the uh, entire debt of the $20 million. There's seven of us, and uh, the Hines County Economic Development Board has taken all of our two-year tax returns, financial statements, and vetted us, and uh, the group has more assets than the debt is. And, the Hines County Economic Development Board felt comfortable that uh, our guarantees were sufficient. And that's all committed to writing? Yes, sir. That's sufficient, uh, Madam Attorney? I'll have to review it in more detail, but I do believe that the Hines County, um, that Blake and his team have reviewed it properly, and it is in order. Okay. And there should be that, and it so provides adequate protection to this board and to the people of this county. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Supervisor Hunter. My, my concern is two things. Uh, no participation with, with teeth. Uh, and I know it's a somewhat public funding. I also, the protection first reservation of rights uh, because the county got quite a bit of skin in the game in this project. And, you know, off the top, I think there would be. Need to be protected off the top, but guarantee and bond, but the first reservation of rights, you know, I want to see the project move. The TIF is the initial stage, but it's hard to support if it's not, if the county is not, has the first reservation of rights. And what I mean 
he was familiar with the church and explained that is that if anything go wrong, they line up first, not second, to be to be protected. And uh, once we get past making this deal go, the only thing else is to protect the uh, participation is good faith, I think. And I think <coughs> and hope and pray that everybody have good faith because sometimes contracts is no over it's not worth no more than the things we've written on. Mm -hmm. You end up in a lot of litigation going on all the time. So moving forward to move the process forward. I still got to get a little more understanding of the totality of the project. Sure. All right, I'll uh, address the first question on minority participation. We're fully committed to the Jobs for Jacksonians program and minority participation. We have minority developers, minority owners, major minority owners. And, um, you know, that's part of the public-private partnership. Now, the hotel and the development in general is going to create 1,066 uh, direct and indirect jobs. There will be 333 construction jobs, 150 full-time, and then you've got the indirect for the rest. And, you, you know, we've got uh, AJ Management Services, who's going to be our project manager, Andrew Jenkins, and he's going to help us navigate through the minority participation and try to to do as much as we can. The uh, Western Hotel in Birmingham that was recently built was able to get 46% uh, minority participation. So we're, we're trying to get half, uh, which is in line with the Jobs for Jacksonians program. And um, so we'll make every effort with as much teeth as, I mean, as whatever we can do to uh, help Jackson. That's what we're that's what this project is for. That's, that's the intent. And I know yes, once sir. we get past go, we have no control. <clears throat> However, I, I'm going to see it all the way to the finish line. So may not happen. Yeah. We want to see it. We want to see that something. We want to see growth uh, in Jackson. Sure. We, we, we know there's a need. Uh, We'll move past the first step. Let's go. go, go. Okay. So, well, I, supervisor. Go ahead, she wants to say something. Okay. Well, uh, Supervisor Hunter, I just wanted to address the Jobs for Jacksonian. The development agreement that the, the developer will have with the city of Jackson actually has some teeth in it. It has reporting requirements that um, the, the city is requiring that the developer maintain and report um, minority participation, and it, it, it does. Uh, influence their commitment when the bonds are getting ready to be issued if they haven't met these minority participation criteria um, obviously that's going to pose a problem man this I've been in this game a long time I hear a lot of this stories I, I know something I think I'm seeing some of the developers in this project I think they got a a real good concern and genuine effort to, to really got a good intent for uh, the project as a whole for the city and the participation. And that that's what got me leaning in the right direction. Uh, but we don't need to, we need to move on. Okay. Supervisor Stafford. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I have a motion. I move that the Chambers and Gaylord Law Firm and our financial advisors, Malachi, uh, be hired to advise the county and structure the transaction with the Western Group. So move. Okay. Um, it's been moved. Is there a second? And then we'll go to discussion as it relates to this. Second. It's been moved and properly second discussion. <coughs> Mrs. Calhoun. Yes, sir. Uh, we have the excuse me, the Hines County Economic Development District that takes a business owner through extensive research. Also, a, a district provides the criteria in which a company, uh, uh, it, well, they provide 
criteria to evaluate a company's background, standing, etc. So I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Wallace can speak to what I have referenced. Uh, the, the Board of Trustees for the Hines County Economic Development District, <coughs> excuse me, also evaluates any business owner's application to do business with Hines County. So what I'm saying is that process has already taken place through our Hines County Economic Development District. That is one of the primary functions of the authority, and that is to reassure that when any business owner comes before this board to request business in Hines County, that uh, owner and company have, uh, have been vetted. Okay. Um, Mr. Walker. Uh, Mr. President, um, I see perfectly well where uh, Supervisor Stokes is going and that uh, he wants uh, adequate protection for uh, this board and for the people of Hines County. I do think, however, that the board, in having a board attorney, already has someone who could provide uh, whatever advice uh, there might be. Um, a, from a legal standpoint, and I would just think that where well, we have someone in place who can deal with what we think we Supervisor Stepp, thank you. Mr. President, Dr. you're exactly right. Uh, my concern is that as we do these projects, and we see them all the time, uh, we can look at uh, uh, the old line horse breeder. You know, these projects go. And yet black people who are supposed to do a great percentage of this work are left in the cold. They it's like supervise a state, state, uh, it's more Hispanic, it's more white. You know, in these inner city neighborhoods, the reason we got crime and problems because they need jobs. Now the ones who dropped out of school deserve to be able to do some manpower on these jobs. This project is really funded to my county. The vast majority of this money is gonna come from the county even though the city is putting some skin in it. And the only way I'm going to feel safe is to know that we got a financial advisor and a legal team watching everything. And I think it's important that we send a message. It's good to say buy Jackson, shop Jackson, but we want to buy Jackson, shop Jackson, we want to buy Hines County, shop Hines County too. Because the people in these rural areas, they need jobs. Whether it's Utica, whether it's Bolton, Elvis, they need to work. So we need to make sure that we're not going to Occur, we're not going to get a curve down to us late, like Supervisor Hunter said, and it's too late for us to do anything. Now, my book is depending on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, any additional comments? Mrs. Calhoun, and then we'll close the public hearing. Uh, the Malachi group has already been hired by this board to provide the county with a financial plan. And part of what, rather, one of the recommendations that has been made is that Hines County cut its contracting opportunities by 15% in order to help uh, boost the county's reserves. Uh, Mr. Bingham is here this morning, and I'm sure he can discuss that particular recommendation. Again, we have confident, capable individuals that can, and that have, rather, I would say not can, that have evaluated the Western proposal and as of today has not found any um, discrepancies in, in the information that has been provided likewise with the research that has taken place regarding uh, the company. Okay. Right there. If there are no additional questions or comments, then what I'm going to do is I will uh, close the public hearing and then I will ask for Supervisor Hunter and Supervisor Stokes to withdraw their motion um, and make the motion on the um, uh, not in the public hearing, but make their motion uh, when we go back to regular session as opposed to a public hearing. 
of this particular public hearing. So I'm now going to close the public hearing at 924. 924. Um, yes, Mr. President, I withdraw my motion uh, to be your second. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Stokes. Oh, I withdrew my motion. Okay. So you withdrew it all together? Well, I think you said we're going to bring it back up. Are they, we going to deal with the issue now or are we going to deal with it later? You're going to deal with it later on. In the agenda? In the agenda. Would you rather we do it all together then? Or we, we can do it all together then and come back in the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming uh, in front of the board. Thank you. We'll see you this afternoon. Yes. Okay. We'll now continue with our printed agenda. We um, now go to elected officials. We have a number of elected officials present. And uh, we'd like to go to Mrs. Colleen Cochran. Uh, you just come forward with your particular issue. We notice we have Dr. Rose here, uh, Commissioner Bracey.